For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There is an ancient book that remains a mystery to most of the Earth's inhabitants. It tells us why we are here, reveals the mysteries of heaven and the horrors of hell, and the hero is God himself in our Lord Jesus Christ. Learn of the Ancient of Days by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 and our message titled, Introducing the Beast. This is part two of two. And we now join the study in progress. Someone like that on a, in a title politically, you can call somebody like that just joking. Uh, but when you're talking in spiritual terms, you call someone my Lord, that's blasphemy. That's the difference. Yes. Then you have the most reverend. Is it Italian? Okay. I have to brush up on my... French. No, I think it's an Italian title. He but says it. Say but most reverend is a title that is only reverend is only used of God. Uh, but most reverend, that is God. He's not the most reverend. The Pope is not. Supreme Bishop. Jesus Christ is the Bishop of our souls. He's the Supreme yeah. Bishop. That is a name of blasphemy on the Pope. And then, of course, he's called Vicar of Christ. And everybody's trying to avoid the obvious that that means Antichrist. He's the Vicar of Christ. He's the replacement, the counterfeit, standing in for Christ on earth. He's the Antichrist. That, those are the titles of blasphemy that the Pope have, and that's what we're to look for according to Revelation 13.1. Now, let's just look at some of the headlines of just the last few weeks. Now, again, Francis may not be the Antichrist, but he is in the office the Bible says there'll be many. We cover that on the message. But there's coming a last one. And right now, Francis is going to fulfill the role. And if he's the Antichrist, uh, I think we have to find out he's got some Jewish blood in him because I believe he will be a, uh, genetically will be a Jew. Um, and he wouldn't be the first pope with Jewish blood in him, by the way. You know, hold on a second. Let's come back. Okay. I want to cover these. First of all, he's acting like God. How many of you knew that if you would Twitter the Pope, then you could get years off purgatory? What a bargain. Is it too late? No. No, as a matter of fact, tell him Greg sent you, because I get a kickback. That's, this is a, just one of the headlines you find out there. If you look, absolve your sins on Twitter. Pope offers forgiveness to anyone who follows his World Youth Day service on TV. Oh, wait a minute. July 16th. I think it's still coming up, but check tonight. You don't want to miss it, Thomas. All right. But uh, he will offer plenary indulgences to right. participants at the event. Right. Indulgences, look, they say it. indulgences are pardons of punishment for sins forgiven in confession. Right. And uh, see, the, the doctrine of purgatory is that you have to burn in hell for a few million years and then you get out and go to heaven. And this is going to knock some of that time off. <laughs> now here he's preaching idolatry. In a message, uh, and I don't have the date on here, but this was recent, where he was telling everyone that Mary is with us in our struggles. Christ? Now let me tell you something. Mary is in heaven. Mary is not with us. We will see Mary one of these days. Mary is a wonderful Christian woman because she confessed her faith in God, her Savior. She was there watching Him crucified. She was there at the resurrection. She was there at Pentecost. She was there at the ascension. But that's the last you see of Mary. And the Bible never tells you to pray to her. And the Bible never says she's going to be with you and that you need to turn to Mary. And that's what this Antichrist is preaching. That is Antichrist. 
And let me tell you something. I don't care if he's in a dress. So I'll say, if that was my mother, if that was my mother, I would still say Antichrist. Do you understand me? You're supposed to love Jesus more than you love your own mother. And yet people will turn on Jesus Christ and love this guy more. When you tell them the truth about this guy, they hate it. It's the spirit of the age. Now look at this. All the evangelicals are using new versions. They're using the Pope's Bible. They're using the Codex Vaticanus. And here is the United Bible Societies back in March after Francis was elected welcoming him. And they were just overjoyed. NIV, New American Standard, English Standard Version, Holman Christian Standard, Living Bible, Message Bible, doesn't matter, you're carrying the Pope's Bible. It's Codex Vaticanus. And the United Bible Society's text is nothing but Vaticanus with edits. The documentary tells you everything you need to know about it. He, this is, these are the people who are giving the evangelical churches their corrupt Bible. And they say, the values of Pope Francis embodies and which are so palpably expressed in the name he has chosen for his papacy are an encouragement to us to double our efforts to make the word capital W of God accessible through translating and distributing. Blah, blah, blah. When you see somebody using Word of God with a capital W, red flag. The only, pers the only thing, if you want to use that terminology, in the Bible that is called Word of God with a capital W is Jesus. You look up every reference to the Bible, it's Word of God, little w. Why? Because one is God incarnate. Now this... Man, there should be... Here, this is where I wanted to go. That's him. That's him hanging out at the United Bible Society's headquarters. And this is the wonderful stories that Pastor Salvador de Lutri told. He said, I remember when we asked him if he would support the Bible Day Initiative. Why not? It's his Bible. Sure he's going to support it. Now if they'd said, we're going to give out King James Bibles and the Spanish Valera to everybody in Argentina. He wouldn't have supported that because it's not his Bible. But he supports this because it's his Bible. The United Bible Society's text. And that's a picture of him being welcomed. And I'm not going to take time to read the whole thing. And now you see the whole Sodom thing coming in. The last pope is a sodomite. I don't care what any of the new teachers tell you. And he's already, if he's not the Antichrist, he's the bridge builder. <laughs> he's laying the, he's putting the path down. And he says on gay priests, to his credit, Benedict didn't cut any uh, slack, didn't mince any words. Benedict said it's a sin. And Benedict said that no priest who's a sodomite should be in the priesthood. This guy comes along and says, well, who am I to judge? Well, amen to that. You aren't anybody to judge. But as Christians, it's not us judging. It's us just speaking the Word. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just telling you that that is a sin. Just as surely as killing somebody is a sin, just as surely as blaspheming is a sin, just as surely as assault is a sin, just as surely as killing babies is a sin, just as surely as any of those other sins are sins, a man on a man and a woman on a woman is still a sin. And if you can't say that, Francis, then sit down and shut up. Amen. Amen. They don't know how deadly it is. And here he is making unity with devils. Now that's not me talking. The Bible says that all false gods are devils. He's a devil. And he is unifying with all the little devils. And all these orthodox devils who go around kissing icons and telling everybody that the icon has power. Devils. Behind that icon is a devil. And the people of this day and age lack all spiritual discernment and spine. They don't want to know the truth, and when they find it out, they don't have the guts to stand for it. And so they go around saying, oh, they're just Christian brothers and sisters. No, they're not. They're devils. And the Pope... Francis is the bridge builder. He's building the bridge for the, the Antichrist, the final one, unifying 
with all the devils. Now, this is to be continued. And we're going to continue. We have, next week we don't have a study. And then the following week we'll come back on this. But in the meantime, I just want you to do this. I want you to pray that God will help you to understand this and then give you the courage to speak the truth. Because if you don't, you are going to be judged by God for being a coward. You understand that? Don't play the games with me and tell me that your dad you know, beat you or your mom didn't breastfeed you or all that nonsense. If you're a Christian and you have the Spirit of God in you, you have the same power that the Apostle Paul had. Do you understand that? Paul didn't have a different spirit than you and I have. The only thing Paul had was a willingness to be killed preaching the truth. Oh, I might lose some Facebook friends. <laughs> they might not invite me to the next reunion. That's the kind of things people are worried about. Don't invite me. I don't have any desire to go someplace where I'm not wanted because I'm going to stand with the truth. Don't invite me. i got plenty of good books to read on that day. Amen. You know what? That's what is missing. And I'm just here to tell you, if you don't want to hear that, there are plenty of churches around, but this church is going to be a church that loves you enough to tell you the truth. And we're going to put it on the internet. We're going to put it on the radio. We're going to put it on the CDs and the DVDs. We're going to stand out there with our signs. We're not going to stop doing what we need to do because of Westboro Baptist Church. People are using all kinds of excuses not to stand for God. Yes. We're going to continue to stand. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And pray that God gives you that courage, that strength. And you know what? Pray that God gives you a love. A love for Him. He died for your sins. Your butt ought to be in a lake of fire right now. And God died for you. And you're worried about what a bunch of punks think of you. These people that you went to school with. These little sissies. These little men walking around like they're big something and they're scared to death to take a stand. I don't care what they think of me. God died for me. That's who I care about. You know what else? You ought to love those people enough that you'll be willing for them to hate you. If you really love somebody, you'll do what's right. You will do whatever it takes to make sure that they understand the truth. You got Catholic friends and relatives, you're going to tell them the truth. You may, I'm not telling you to walk up and say, you're going to listen to me right now. Poop is the Antichrist. You're going to do it. I'm not saying to act like that. You, use tact. Why is that serpents and harmless and stuff? Pray about it. If it's not the right moment, it's not the right moment. But don't always use that as an excuse. Oh, well, it's just not the right moment. The Satan will always give you that excuse. Love them enough. Hey, if it helps, walk up to them for a second and just look at them flaming in fire. Just walk up to them and watch them burn for a minute. You know why? Because that's what's going to happen. Hell is a real place. The lake of fire is everlasting. And if you reject Jesus Christ, you choose to go there. And if those people that you love reject Jesus Christ, they choose to go to a lake of fire. But make them make the decision. Make them make the decision. Put it in front of them. And remember, do you think, how many of you here believe Jesus Christ tells the truth? Okay? Jesus said when they hate you for that, don't take it wrong. They don't hate you. They hate Him. Yes. Amen? Amen? So when you take, Amen. you pray and you get the guts and you walk up, and if you have to see Him burning first, you just sit there and watch Him burn. <laughs> and then you walk up to Him and say, you know what? I don't want to offend you. But I really want to explain something to you. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross. Jenny had a, a chance today, the lady reading her bumper stickers. And Jenny walks up and says, you like my bumper stickers? And the lady says, well, does she say yes? Yeah, she says, yeah. And so Jenny says, are you saved? And she said, well, I'm a Catholic. 
You see what I'm saying? How can you not get angry with this religion when they're sending their own people to hell? They're not telling their own people how to be saved. Pope Francis could talk to a billion people every week and tell them the gospel, and he doesn't. Because he loves Pope Francis more than he loves souls. And the media makes him look like such a wonderful person. Media, shut up. Until Pope Francis tells people how to be saved, don't tell me how wonderful he is. He's a devil. Any man who stands in a pulpit and doesn't tell people how to know they can go to heaven is a devil. That's a Methodist. That's a Baptist. That's a Presbyterian. That's a Buddhist. That's an Islamist. That's a humanist. doesn't matter who they are. If they stand in a pulpit and they don't tell people how to know they can go to heaven, you're looking at a devil with skin. Amen. And I believe our time is short. I get excited, as you can tell. Because I believe our time is really short. We may be here for a long time, but I believe it's short. And I believe that is, John said that the hope of the return of Jesus Christ coming at any moment purifies us. And if you will open your eyes to the signs and see how close it appears to be, it will purify you. It will stir up in you a desire to take a stand for God. Amen. But people choose to be. And that's why I'm asking anybody in here who's like that, pray that the Lord will help you to see. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this time. We thank You for the Holy Spirit. We thank You for this infallible book. We thank You for the message of the Gospel. We thank You for Jesus, for His shed blood. We thank You for the resurrection and the knowledge that Jesus is not dead like Muhammad, but He's alive. <coughs> Jesus is not dead like Buddha. He's alive. Jesus ascended to heaven and promised to return and to take us to be with Him in the place that He's prepared. We look so forward to that day. In the meantime, Lord, fill us with Your Spirit. Give us a strength and a boldness to preach the Gospel. Lord, to see souls saved. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll take a few questions.
sure to visit our website at bbfohio.com for links to hundreds of audio and video messages, as well as articles, links, and other free resources, and a new bookstore being developed offering additional items. This message was brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship. I am Pastor Greg, and we thank you for listening. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house.